after the nationwide vote, the winner of American Idol season 15 is... Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 secrets reality TV shows don't want you to know. Is there a spooky ghost here? Look! What is that? What is that? I'm pretty sure that's their television! For this list, we'll be looking at some not-so-common knowledge about how some of your favorite reality shows operate behind the scenes. Which disappointed you the most about a reality show? Give us the lowdown in the comments. Number 10. Both options are filmed. Love it or list it. If given the chance to overhaul the look of your existing home or sell it and move into a new place, which path would you follow? We have an energetic eight-year-old. What are you doing, James? Got my car. Who's trying to practice his karate. Yeah! And it really just doesn't work. Well, if you're lucky enough to be on HGTV's Love It or List It show, this is exactly what you'd experience. The new estimated value of their home is $1,150,000. That increases the value of their home by $300,000. Homeowners work with both hosts, one who helps renovate a portion of their property, while the other looks for a replacement they can buy should they list their home for sale. Oh yeah, this is a great space for an office. You can do like a wraparound, tons of storage. The catch here is regardless of what the owners decide, it's been reported that the show shoots both a love and list ending. And are you going to love it? Or are you going to list it? gonna list it. Fantastic decision. If the owner loved the renovation, but the list it one looked better on camera, the show might choose the latter. We are going to love it. <laughs> what? Uh, You're gonna give up on that master watch? bedroom? Number nine, multiple auditions. American Idol, The Voice. You know how you see the nervous singer come into audition for the judges on American Idol? That's not necessarily the first audition they've had. For every aspiring singer who comes in off the street, the on-camera auditions we see are traditionally the third round a contestant goes through. William, why are you here? Um, I'm here to, um, to sing to America. An initial audition from one of the producers precedes any shot at getting in the room with the likes of Paula Abdul or Katy Perry. Patrick. Patrick Thomas. I was the first one to turn around because you had the strongest entrance. That means that those terrible auditions we cringe at made it through two sets of performances already before being given the boot by the cast. It gives us a whole different view of William Hung's She Bangs audition now. She bangs! She bangs! <laughs> Oh, baby, but she moves, she moves. Number eight, not the real owners, Pawn Stars. Who knew that the world of a pawn shop would be interesting enough to have its own reality show? The seller seems pretty convinced that because it's from this particular mine, it makes a scale worth more money. Pawn Stars gives us a window into all kinds of things people bring into their shop to try and earn a little extra cash. My dad gave this to me, and he's hoping that it'll pay for my dress for my wedding. But much like many other reality shows, there's less real going on here than you may know. That could be a big one if Harrison Ford signed this. Given the random nature of how places like this operate, it's no surprise to learn that many of the great finds coming into the store are prearranged. How'd you get it? Uh, from my understanding, it was purchased in auction 30 years ago. I got it in a will. It is, however, a little unsettling to learn that in some cases, the real owners of the items being pawned aren't considered TV friendly and get replaced by actors or other individuals. This one looks to me like a solid $50,000. Wow. Almost right on the mark. I might hug you. <laughs> In that case, it's fake. Number seven, can't keep the ring, the Bachelor franchise. How do you, do you know? Do you know something I don't know? Aside from the fact that couples aren't supposed to eat food on their dates, Bachelor Nation manages to keep a lot of details about their shows under wraps. Like, did you know that The Bachelor isn't supposed to offer his coat to the girls? Or how about how contestants aren't paid for their appearance while the leads are? It sucks. Last, but certainly not least, who pays for those engagement rings? Will you oh. marry me? Oh my god, what? Yes, oh, oh what? <laughs> Priced anywhere from $45,000 and beyond, Neil Lane himself donates the rings to the happy couple, but with one little catch. Should they break up within two years, they have to give the rings back. They better be sure it's real love. I get to love you forever, this is amazing. Number six, some homes aren't even for sale. House Hunters. 
Similar to a previous entry, House Hunters is all about finding the perfect new home for someone. We'll definitely have to say goodbye to some of the convenience, but um, say hello to some space. Hello. However, if you peek behind the curtain a little bit, you'll find there's a little less reality to this than what we see on television. Participants are typically already in the process of purchasing a specific property, which is then used as one of the options shown on camera. Oh, the floors are kind of creepy. <laughs> yeah, they would need to be fixed. The other two homes are then picked by producers. They can be properties the owners passed on previously, but have also been dwellings that were not for sale at all, but simply look great on camera. I'm looking for a blank slate, something that we can just put our own sort of personality into it. So the next time you watch this show, keep in mind, they already know which one they're going to pick. There's a lot of space. There's plenty of room for Sophia in the backyard to play. And I feel like I really lucked out. Number five, Gordon Ramsay isn't that mean. Hell's Kitchen. One thing that reality TV has shown us is that everyone loves a villain. Editors have a field day cutting scenes together to showcase a character archetype needed for the story. That looks like a dog's dinner. And you want me to serve that in there? Yet, when you watch someone like Gordon Ramsay, it's hard not to think of him as being such a nasty person. Salmon roast on a plank of cedar. I think you're a plank. Well, I don't really know what that means, chef. Plank means an idiot. The Hell's Kitchen personality has been seen cursing out countless would-be chefs and restaurant owners time and time again. However, when you turn the cameras off, there's a whole other personality that emerges. This can't be anything more than a joke. A quick search of the web and you'll find stories of how charming and nice a man he is. Filled with a sense of humor, it's as if his on-screen persona is the hide to his real-life Jekyll. Dana Clemenza. Yes, Chef. You're heading to Silverwood Lake, where you've got the most amazing gourmet picnic. Nice. Cool. So romantic. Number four, not always mystical, Ghost Hunters. With 14 seasons and 250-plus episodes under their belt, Ghost Hunters has certainly caught the attention of a few viewers. Father Murphy, if that door sound was your attempt to tell us that you're here, then we apologize for doubting you. What was that? And with that kind of success comes a bit of pressure to deliver on what the show is all about, ghosts. This is very interesting. To me, it sounds like a beginning of what? Although paranormal investigation is a legitimate field, much of what viewers see on the program is not always beyond explanation. I heard a beep. Like a equipment beep, maybe. Many of the scary or mysterious sounds heard on the show are merely that of the crew working off camera. One Redditor noted how a creepy get out voice was merely that of a property manager yelling at a homeless person. We're not saying ghosts aren't real, but maybe take what you see on television with a grain of salt. Do you hear that? There, there, look, what is that? What is that? I think that's just a cigarette lighter. Number three, the use of auto tune. The voice, other talent shows. Love it or hate it, auto-tune has become one of the most common tools used to help a singer's voice. The audio altering technology allows a vocalist's off-key voice to be shifted electronically to the correct key for the song they're performing. I'm not saying it was all perfect tonight. There were a couple notes here and there, even one of the big notes at the end was a little sharp, whatever. But I think you've got great potential. With the likes of American Idol and The Voice showcasing countless singing talent, it may surprise you that auto-tune is often employed. Since no one wants to hear 90 minutes of bad singing, producers have been known to auto-tune contestants to improve their sound. Anywhere you are, anywhere you are. The Voice has even been accused of using auto-tuned versions of songs during the blind auditions. Singers still have to prove themselves, but it looks like technology may give them a boost here and there. A lot of people work really, really hard for their dreams, but it's not meant for everybody. That's why you use auto-tune and I don't. Actually! Oh. Number two, winners, finalists are pre-chosen. America's Got Talent, other talent shows. It's all come down to this. Who truly decides the winners and losers in a reality show competition? Whether it's judges, the audience, or the contestants themselves, viewers want to believe the elimination choices being shown on screen are real. Tonight, it didn't go in your favor. You're not going to make it, man. Sorry. Remember, this is TV we're talking about, so not everything is as it appears. Candace Glover! 
former contestants on Project Runway have gone on record as saying eliminations are pre-planned. America's Got Talent has been accused of rigging the show through plants in the audience and producer interference. At the end of the day, showrunners want their program to be entertaining and will often take whatever steps they need to make that happen. I am totally speechless. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I, 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 it's surreal. Um, I, I, I'm bowled over. Thank, thank you. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, the furniture and decor aren't free. Fixer Upper. Well, I'm sure you guys are ready. Ready. Right. Let's do it, Chip. Let's check it out. The average longtime homeowner would not object to someone coming in offering to remodel and decorate your home, such is the case with the HGTV show Fixer Upper. By the time the episode is over, owners are overjoyed by the transformation of their living space. So happy I picked this marble. I, I like it because you like it, but I like it because I like it too. <laughs> what viewers at home don't get to see is the production crew taking much of the furniture with them. Given the budget necessary to keep the furnishings, the homeowners are often left with a catalog that provides them details and pricing for everything seen on camera. Additionally, many renovations aren't even complete when the taping of the show is over. The subway tile really fits perfect with that granite that you picked. Mm -hmm. And I love this chandelier. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.